Uh, and then this, this is the second part of the uh, final review uh, video, so second page. So the first page went through 1 through 16. We'll do the second page, uh, the second piece of paper in there, which is 17 through uh, 32. So it's exactly the same number of problems as the other one. First page was. Pure coincidence. Um, a statue is 24 feet tall. A model of the statue is 36 inches tall. What is the ratio of the height of the model to the height of the actual statue? So we have a statue. Uh, we can just put it whatever. Uh, 24 feet tall. And then we have a model that is 36 inches tall. So this is 24 feet. Uh, let's convert inches to feet. So we have the same units. So 36 inches, uh, there are 12 inches in a foot. Okay, the inches cancel out. 36 divided by 12 is three, so it's three feet. So the height of our model is three feet. Okay, 36 inches is three feet. So here's our statue and here's the model. Okay, the question is asking, what is the ratio of the height of the model to the height of the actual statue? So the height of the model is three. The height of the actual statue is 24. Okay, so we have three to 24. We can reduce that to uh, one to eight. Okay, or you can put it as a fraction. Three over 24 is going to be one to eight. So the model is one-eighth the size of the statue, or you can think of the statue as being eight times the size of the model. Okay, 18. Make sure we're recording. We're good. 18. Uh, we have two quadrilaterals here. We want to determine if they are similar. So in order for these uh, figures to be similar, uh, we need to know that the uh, ratios of the corresponding sides are going to be equal. The sides are proportional, so all four pairs of sides need to be proportional, and all pairs of angles need to be congruent. I think it's safe to assume we have a parallelogram here, so this will be opposite sides of parallelograms are congruent. Okay, and then these are supplementary, so this is going to be 60, 60, 60, and 60. Well, no, we don't need to assume that because if we can find all the sides, are, we, we don't need to assume that. I'm sorry. No need to make assumptions here. Okay, if we can find all the sides are proportional, we can determine that the um, figures are similar. Right? No, we need all the angles to be congruent. we got to assume that they're parallelograms. So if they're parallelograms, it's got to be 120, 60. 60 and 60. A little bit of an assumption. Sometimes you got to make assumptions. You got to be prudent sometimes. All right, so let's look at our sides. I mean, the goal is to look at the sides here. So we have 6.6. Okay, 3, 6.6, .6 and 3. So if these two are going to be similar, the longest side on this one is going to have to correspond with the longest side in the other one. So 6.6 .6 is going to have to correspond with 6.08. We're going to have to rotate it. Okay, and then... 3 is going to have to correspond with 1.9, 6.6 is going to have to correspond with 6.08, and then 3 is going to have to correspond with 1.9. So we need to put this in our calculator uh, and see if those ratios are actually equal. So 6.6 .6 divided by 6.08, I'm getting 1.0855. Then 3 divided by 1.9 is 1.58. Okay, and then again, you get 1.0855, and then you get 1.58. So clearly, these are not equal. Since the ratios are not equal, uh, the, the quadrilaterals cannot be similar because the sides are not proportional. The angles still might be congruent, but the sides are not proportional, so we know it's no. So we didn't need to make any assumptions. We're going to be no anyways. Okay, 19. Are the polygons similar? 
if they are, write a similarity statement and give the similarity ratio. So the first thing we want to do is we want to draw these out. So again, we're going to do 19 here. Okay, so we're doing 19 right now. Okay, so let's draw them out. I'm just going to draw some triangles, R, S, T. And U, V, W. RS is 10, RT is 15, RT is 15. The measure of angle R is 32 degrees. Okay, UV is 12, UW is 18, and the measure of angle U is 32. So are they similar? There's three ways to determine if triangles are similar. We have angle-angle similarity. We have side-angle-side and side-side-side. Similarity. So in order to show that they're similar by angle-angle similarity, uh, we need to show that there are two pairs of angles that are congruent. For side-angle-side similarity, we need to show that we have two pair of sides that are proportional, two corresponding, corresponding sets of sides that are proportional, and we need to show that the included angle, the angle in between those pairs of sides, are congruent. Or we can use side, side, side by showing that all the sides are proportional. So the ratios of all the corresponding sides are going to be equal. Here they're giving us information about two sets of sides and one pair of angles. So our goal is probably to look for side angle side. So we need to show that we have two, one pair of congruent angles. So we need to show uh, the A here. We can do that pretty easily by doing, saying that angle R is congruent to angle U, and we know those are congruent because they're equal, their measures are equal, 32 and 32. Okay, so that takes care of the A. And now let's look at the sides. We need to show that the ratio of the two sets of corresponding sides are equal. So 10 is going to correspond with 12. And 15 is going to correspond with 18. So the question becomes, are those two ratios equal? Well, 10 over 12 is 5, 6. 15 over 12 is also 5, 6. So 5, 6 is going to equal 5, 6. So we know that these are definitely equal. So that's one, two pairs of sides. So we have side, angle, side. So we go back to the question. Um, yes, they are similar. Uh, if they are already similar statement and give the similarity ratio. Well, the similarity ratio is going to be 5, 6. Okay, this triangle is, uh, the small one, smaller one is 5, 6 the size of the large one. The large one is 6 fifths the size of the small one. So you could put 5, 6 or 6 fifths. Both, would, both of those answers would be fine. Um, so similarity ratio is 5, 6 or 6 fifths. Okay, this one's six fifths bigger than that one. That one's five sixths the size of the other one. Similarity statement. So again, you can write uh, the first triangle a um, number of different ways. Uh, let's just go the way they wrote them. So triangle RST. Okay, is similar to triangle. What corresponds with R? R corresponds with U. S corresponds with V. And T corresponds with. Okay, so similarity statement, similarity ratio, and yes, they are similar. Number 20, the polygons are similar, but not necessarily drawn to scale. Find the values of X and Y. I don't see Y on here, I just see X. I guess we're just finding X. Can be uh, okay. Triangles ABC and DEF are similar. Um, since the triangles are similar, we know the sides are proportional. Since the sides are proportional, we can set up ratios between the court set the, the corresponding sides. Okay, so we know AB is going to correspond to DE. AB is going to correspond to DE, and we know BC is going to correspond to EF. Okay, so 5x to 5 is going to equal 
for it to x. Okay, so that's our proportion now. We have two sets of ratios that are equal. We know they're equal because they are similar triangles and the sides of similar triangles are proportional. We can cross multiply. 5x times x is 5x squared. 5 times 4 is 20. We want to get x by itself, so we got to get x squared by itself first. So we divide both sides by 5 to get rid of it. Okay, so that's going to give us x squared equals 4. Here to the square, we do the inverse operation, which is square root. So x is going to be plus or minus 2, but we can't have a negative value, so it's got to be the positive 2. We can't have a negative length. We can have, we could get a negative x, but we can't get a negative uh, length for our triangle. So we can't use the negative one, so it's got to be the positive one. So we have x. Um, and then they're asking us to find the lengths of a, b, and e, f. So a, b is 5x. So 5 times 2 is going to be 10. Okay, so a, b is going to be 10. And then e, f is just going to be 2. 21. Write a similarity statement for the triangles. So we know, we don't, I mean, they're, they're, they're telling us to write a similarity statement. Let's just check and see if they're similar first. Um, so we know the three angles of a triangle add up to 180. So 180 minus 60 minus 53 is going to give us 67. 180 minus 67 minus 60 is going to give us 53. So we know angle D and angle G, uh, their measures are equal, so they're congruent. We know the measure of angle C is equal to the measure of angle F, so those are congruent, and then E and H as well. Okay, so C, let's just name the first triangle however we want it. You can name the first one however you want to. I'm just going to do C, D, E. Um, C corresponds with F, so we're going to do triangle F. D corresponds with G. And E corresponds with H. So there's our similarity statement. That's all they're asking for there. Uh, 22 asks us to state whether the triangles are similar. If so, write a similarity statement and the postulate theorem you, you used. So first thing, again, the three ways we have to prove triangles are similar is angle, angle, side, angle, side, 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 side. Do we have any information on the angles? No, we do not. We have no information on any of the angles, so we can't use angle, angle. We're not going to use side, angle, side. The only one we should check for is side, side, side. If it's going to, the triangles are going to be similar by side, 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 then the ratios of all, then the sides are going to be proportional. You're going to have three sets of proportional sides, which means you, you're going to have three sets of corresponding ratios uh, that are equal. So again, we want to set up our triangles here. If they are going to be similar, the largest side is going to be, is going to correspond with the largest side. So over here, I have AC is the longest side. So AC would have to correspond with MO. Okay, because 8 and 12 are the biggest numbers. Okay, and then BC is going to have to correspond with uh, MN. And AB is going to correspond with um, o -N. Okay, so that's 8 over 12, and 5 over 7.5, and 5 over 7.5. So to see if these ratios, we have to check and see if the ratios are equal. If they are, then the sides are proportional. And if all three sets of sides are proportional, then the triangles will be similar by side, side, side. So 8 over 12, that's going to be 2 thirds, 2 thirds, and 2 thirds. So yes. So we have side, side, side similarity. So are they similar? Yes. So similarity statement, triangle ABC. Again, you can write the first triangle however you want, but you have to match it up. A is going to correspond with M. You can do it two ways. You can reflect it or flip it over. So A corresponds with O, or you can rotate it. So A corresponds with M. I'm going to do the rotation one. Or did I do that here? No, I did the flip one. Okay, so let's do the flip one. So A is going to correspond with O, we said. 
Uh, B is going to correspond with N, and C is going to correspond with M. And then we want to state the theorem or postulate we use. So the theorem we're going to use is side, 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 side. If it asks for the similarity ratio, the similarity ratio would be 2 to 3 or 3 to 2. This triangle is three is 1.5 times bigger or 3 halves bigger than this one. This one is 2 thirds the size of this one. Uh, number 23, explain why the triangles are similar and then find the value of X. Okay. So they're giving us one, again, three ways to show the triangles are similar, angle, angle, side, angle, side, 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 side. Here we have a pair of angles. So they're giving us these two angles. Um, we also have vertical angles. This, again, one thing you want to look for in triangles is vertical angles, and we have a pair of vertical angles. We know all vertical angles are congruent. So we have angle, angle, similarity. So they're similar by angle, angle, similarity. If they're similar, we know the sides are proportional, so we can set up a proportion to solve for x. So let's start over here on this triangle, X. I like to always start with X. X is going to correspond. So this is where some of you still struggle. Um, is X going to correspond with this piece or this piece? It's going to correspond here. So this is the two marks. Okay, so these angles correspond and these angles correspond. Okay. So between the, them is just empty space. Between them is empty space. Okay, the two and the unlabeled vertices. Okay, that's 8. So x is going to correspond with 8. So x over 8. And then if you start at this triangle, you got to start in this one again. So this is going to be 7 over 12. These two sides are corresponding, these two sides are corresponding, and then these two sides are corresponding. Okay, if you wanted to put in the other side, Right, x is between the 2 and the 3. 8 is between the 2 and the 3. So it's x is the 8. x corresponds with 8. Okay, then we have 7 is between the 1 and the 3. 12 is between the 1 and the 3. Here's our proportion. We can cross multiply and solve. That's 12x equals 56. Divide both sides by 12. Uh, that's going to be 4 and 2 thirds, right? 56. Divided by 12, 14 over 3, um, which is 4 and 2 thirds. So x is going to be 14 over 3. We can check our answer, 14 over 3 divided by 8 is 0. 0.58. And then 7 divided by 12 is also 0.58, so we're good. Definitely have the correct answer here. Okay, 24, same thing. We want to determine if they are similar and if they are y, find x. All right, so I'm going to redraw these two triangles. So here's the top one, and then here's the big bottom one. Okay, This is 6, this is 8. This is x. This piece right here is 6 plus 4. It's going to be 10, right? It's the whole thing here. Okay, 6 plus 4 is 10. So this, maybe I do them a different color. This triangle is this one. Okay, and then the big one is this one. So it's 6 plus 4 is 10 by x. So first thing, uh, we want to check and see if these are similar. So they're giving us these little arrows, which tell us that these two lines are parallel. And we know a few things about angles. When you have transversals that intersect parallel lines, we know that corresponding angles are congruent and alternate interior angles are congruent. So whenever you have parallel lines, you should look for alternate interior angles or corresponding angles. Here we have a set of corresponding angles. So again, here's our transversal. 
Here's our parallel, parallel lines. Corresponding angles are congruent. Okay. We also have a set of corresponding angles over here as well. Okay, with this transversal. Okay, and we know that they have a shared angle. So that angle is going to be reflexive. It's going to be equal to itself. So that angle right here is part of both triangles. Okay, this angle. Okay, or these two. Corresponding angles are congruent if the lines are parallel. Okay, and then here's these. So yes, we know they're similar because we have at least two pairs of angles that are congruent. So yes, it's going to be angle, angle. Similarity. Since they're similar by the angle-angle similarity theorem, we know that the sides are proportional. Since the sides are proportional, we can set up ratios and set them equal to each other. So 8 is between the 1 and the 2. It's going to correspond with x. So 8 over x is going to equal, again, if you start with this triangle, you've got to start with that triangle the next time. So then 8 over x, 6 over 10. Cross multiply, that's going to be 80 equals 6x. Um, that's not going to go in evenly. 80 is going to give us 13 point, 13 to one third, 13.3 repeating. Right, number 25. Campsites F and G are on opposite sides of a lake. A survey crew made the measurements shown in the diagram with what is the distance between the two campsites. So here is one campsite F and here's another campsite G. We want to know what the distance is between those two campsites. So I'm going to call that X. So the trick here is we got to figure out what pieces are going to be corresponding to what pieces. So um, here, we have vertical angles. We have vertical angles. Okay. Um, since we don't know FG, we know F, these two are going to be corresponding sides. So let's just ignore these for now. Okay. Let's check and make sure they're similar. So 92 is the bigger of these two numbers. So we have 82 and 92. 92 is the bigger of the two numbers. If these triangles are similar, the largest sides are going to correspond with each other. So 92 would have to correspond with 82.8 because 82.8 is larger than 73.8. So if these are similar, the largest two sides are going to correspond with each other. The smaller two sides are going to correspond with each other. Okay. So that's how we figure out which way it goes. So let's just check. I mean, they're going to be similar, but let's just check. So 92 is to 82.8. Okay, we started with this triangle, we've got to start with this one again. So 82 is going to be 273.8. So 92 is 273.8. Okay. Divided by 82.8 is 1.11. 82 divided by 73.8 is 1.11. So yes, we have two sides that are two ratios of two sets of corresponding to sides that are concurrent, and we have a pair or that are proportional, the, the ratios are equal, so those two sides are proportional. We have angle. So yes, we have side angle side similarity. Since we have side angle side similarity, we can set up a ratio to solve for x. Okay. So x is going to correspond with 47. Again, you can pick either of the two you want. So I did x over 47. So I started with this triangle. Now I still have to try with it. So you pick either one. I'm just going to go with 82.8. Okay. And we established that 82.8 was similar to or, or corresponded with 92. We can cross multiply here, 92x, uh, 47 times 82.8. So we're going to get 92x equals 3,891.6. And we can divide both sides by 92. And we get 43.42.3. Just to double check our answer, 42.3 or 47 divided by 42.3 should equal 1.11. And it does. So 
So it's the same, it's equal to the ratio of the other ones that we had before. So, uh, meters, our answer here was 42.3 meters. That was the distance between the two poles. 26, find the geometric mean. We want to find the geometric mean here. Um, to find the geometric mean of two numbers, we're going to take the square root of their product. So we take the nth root of the product. So there's only two numbers. So n is two. So we're doing the square root. So we take the square root of the product of 175 and 7, which is 175 times 7. So the square root of 1225, which I believe is, nope, 35, 35. I believe wrong. I won't even tell you what I believe because it was wrong. Okay, and then 27, we have um, triangles. Okay, it's telling us we have similar triangles. So we have three sets of similar triangles. So we can use geometric mean here as well for A and B. Okay, so um, start with six is an altitude. Is that a, so again, Geometric mean, so 10 is the geometric mean of 8 plus 8 plus A. B is the geometric mean of A plus A plus 8. And 6 is the geometric mean of 8 and A. So let's do the altitude first. That way we only have one variable. We could use the 10 as well, but let's use the 6. So again, we set this up by doing 6 over something equals something over 6. We can redraw all the triangles out if we wanted to. Found the corresponding sides, but, you know, we did that enough. We know the rule. So you take the altitude and you have to use the two pieces of the hypotenuse. The two pieces of the hypotenuse are A and E. So you fill those in. Then we can cross multiply and solve. This is going to be 36 equals A to A. Divide by 8. Divide by 8. A is going to be um, 4 and a half. Don't even need to put that in the calculator. 4 and a half. Since that's four and a half, we know the rate, the whole hypotenuse here is going to be eight plus four and a half, which is 12 and a half. So we can now do uh, the leg, which is B. Okay, so again, we set it up similarly. Okay, since it's the leg, we're not using both pieces of the hypotenuse. We're using the closest piece of the hypotenuse and the whole hypotenuse. So the closest piece is 4.5. And the whole thing is 12.5. Closest piece and the whole thing. 4.5 plus 8, which was 12.5. And cross multiply, b squared, 12.5 times 4.5 is 56.25. And then to get rid of the square, we take the square root of both sides. So square root, second answer, 7.5. B is going to be 7.5. 4.5A, 7.5. Okay, number 28. Find the lengths of the missing sides. The triangles are not drawn to scale. Okay, so we're already on triangles now. Oops, didn't work. So here we have a right triangle and we have two sides. We're trying to find the missing side. So we're trying to find a third side. If you have two sides of a right triangle and you're trying to find the third side, you're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Or better, leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So legs here are six and eight. So six squared plus eight squared. The hypotenuse we labeled as x. That's 36 plus 40, uh, 64 equals x squared, which is 100 equals x squared. To get rid of the square, we take the square root. Square root of 100 is plus or minus 10, but you can't have a negative length for your hypotenuse. So it's just going to be positive. Last triangle. 
329. It's very much the same thing. Wants us to leave your answer in simple, simplest radical form, though. So again, we have two sides of a right triangle. We want to find the third side, which is the hypotenuse. So we're going to do the two legs squared. So leg, again, it's not because these are numbers and that's x. It's because they're the legs. So 7 squared plus 8 squared equals x squared. That's 49 plus 56 equals x squared. Okay, that's going to be 105 equals x squared. Uh, 105. I don't know. 9, no. What can go into 105? Um, 4 can't. 9 can't. Sixteen, twenty-five, thirty-six, forty-nine. Nope. So we don't have anything. It's just square. Uh, sorry, this was one hundred five. Okay. To get rid of the square, we take the square root of both sides. So we're going to x equals the square root of one hundred five. Can't reduce that. Can't simplify that. That is the simplest radical form. So it's the square root of one hundred five. Thirty. A triangle has side lengths of 10, 24, and 34. Is it a right triangle? Well, if it were a right triangle, then a squared plus b squared would equal c squared. Of these three numbers, we would know the hypotenuse would have to be 34 because the hypotenuse is the longest side. It's longer than the other two sides. Right away, I know the answer is no because... Uh, the triangle inequality theorem says that two sides of a triangle have to add up to a greater length than the third side. So 10 plus 24 is not greater than 34. So right away, it's going to be no. But this is how we would check if it's a right triangle. Does a squared plus b squared equals c squared? So do the two smaller sides, which would be the two legs, 10 squared plus 24 squared. Do they add up to the hypotenuse squared? 34, again, would have to be the hypotenuse because it would have because it's the longest side. So we would get 100 plus 24 squared is 576, okay, which is 676. Um, 34 squared is 1156. Um, those are clearly not equal, so the answer is no, not a right triangle. If a squared plus b squared did equal c squared, then the answer would be yes, it is a right triangle. 31, find uh, the value of the variable. If your answer is not an integer, leave it in simplest radical form. So again, um, well, not again, but um, what we have here is an angle and a side, and we're trying to find another side. So th there's really three types of right triangle problems you're going to get. Um, like the previous two, if you have two sides of a right triangle and you're trying to find a third side, you're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. You're going to use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. If you are solving for an angle, you're going to use an inverse trig, inverse sine, inverse cosine, inverse tangent. If you are solving for a side, if you have one side and one angle and solving for a side, you're going to use regular trig, sine, cosine, and tangent. Here we have a side and an angle and we're solving for a second side. Um, so it's going to be trig, right? So we've got a total. So uh, oh. first thing we want to do is label our hypotenuse. Our hypotenuse is across from the right angle. So here's our hypotenuse. It's across from the right angle. Then we want to circle our angle. Our angle is 45. And we want to see if the x is next to or across from. If the x is next to, it's adjacent. If it's across from, it's opposite. It is across from. So it's going to be opposite. So we have hypotenuse and opposite. So we look at our trig functions and see which one it's going to fit. Well, we have opposite hypotenuse for sine. So we're going to use sine. So sine of theta, sine of the angle, is going to equal the opposite over the hypotenuse. 
Okay, our angle is 45 again. So sine of 45 is going to equal the opposite, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is 5. Our goal here is to solve for the variables. Their variable is x, so we want to get x by itself. In order to do that, we have to get rid of the 5. So 5 is in the denominator, so we can multiply both sides by So we get 5 times the sine of 45 is going to equal x. We can then put that in our calculator. So 5 times the sine of 45 is going to be 3.54. Okay, let's check and see if that makes sense. And it does. It's less than the hypotenuse. Um, well, you know... Okay, well, that's one way to do it, but that doesn't fulfill our question. Our question says, if your answer is not an integer, leave it in simplest radical form. So we don't want this as a decimal. We want it as a radical form. So this is a perfectly fine way to get your answer. 3.54 is right. It's just a rounded answer. So they don't want a rounded answer. They want it to lay, say in radical form. So the other way we're going to do this is we're going to note that this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So the three angles of triangle add up to 180. So 180 minus 90 minus 45 is 45. 45, 45, 90. Our rules for 45, 45, 90 triangles were um, the hypotenuse equals the leg times the square root of uh, two and the leg equals the hypotenuse divided by the square root of two. We're looking for a leg, so again, this is a leg. This is a leg. The legs are the sides that are adjacent to the right angle. The hypotenuse is across from the right angle. Okay, so the leg here is x and the hypotenuse is five. We want the simplest radical form. We don't want a radical in the denominator, so we need to multiply by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. That's going to give us 5 root 2. Square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 2. And that's going to be our simplest radical form. And I bet if we put that in, we would get 3.54. So 5 square root of 2. If we don't, we're in a little bit of trouble. But we did. 3.53553. Number 32, and the last one on this page. Um, how are we doing on time? 38. Jeez. Okay, find the variable. So we have x and y. Uh, these are both 30, 60, 90 triangles. So again, 30 and 90, which means this one has to be 60 because 180 minus 30 minus 90 is 60. Same thing over here, this is going to have to be 60, but let's stick with this one first. Okay, so we know in a 30, 60, 90 triangle that the hypotenuse equals the short leg uh, times 2. So in the 45, 45, 90, there wasn't a short and a long leg. And the reason there weren't a short and a long leg is because it was 45 and 45 were the two angles, so the two legs were equal. So one wasn't longer than the other, they were just equal. Uh, here we have a leg that's shorter and long, one that's longer. So the long leg is across from the 60 degrees. So X is our long leg. Uh, y is our short leg. It's across from the shorter angle, the 30 degrees. And then across from the right angle is our hypotenuse. So 20 root 3 is the hypotenuse. So uh, we have hypotenuse equals short leg times 2. We also have um, the long leg equals the short leg times the square root of 3, right? But we want to um, use what we have. The one they're giving us is the hypotenuse, so we're going to use this first equation first. So the hypotenuse here is 20 root 3. The short leg is y, and we're multiplying by 2. So for multiplying by 2, that's really just 2y. Let's divide by 2. Okay. Case cancels. Y is going to be 10 root 3. So 
short leg is 10 root 3. And now we can use our other equation, which was the long leg equals the short times the square root of 3. So our long leg here is x. And the short leg is 10 root 3. I'm going to multiply by the square root of 3. So x is going to be 10. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 is 3. So that means x is going to be 30. Um, just to check our answer, we can do the Pythagorean theorem here. So um, that's 300, wait, 10. That's 300. 30 times 30 is... 900, um, so we have uh, 900 plus 300, square root of that answer is 34.6, 20 times the square root of 3 is 34.6, so we know we have the right answers because a squared plus b squared equals c squared, 30 squared plus 10 root 3 squared equals 20. Oh, it equals 20, yeah. Yep. All right. Um, so that's it for page two.